Uh, I will read uh, as instructed for between 20 and 25 minutes. Um, it will seem maybe like 28 or 29, but it will only be 25. <coughs> I always say that, I never tired of it. Um, and I'll read from uh, uh, this uh, wee book of wee poems, um, 40 Sonnets, um, which is accurately descriptive of its, of its contents, I would say. Um, there's, <laughs> there's a thing in the middle, <laughs> which is uh, a sonnet by designation only, a willful designation. Uh, but for the most part, they adhere to the, uh, uh, the usual expectations of the form. Uh, prime amongst which is that it's short, as you know. Uh, so if you don't like one, there'll be another one along in a minute. Uh, so, <laughs> so it's always a relief, you know. Um, it's one of the two basic errors when you're, when you're reading, isn't it? If you, if, is to say, uh, now I'll read something longer. Uh, and you can, and you can, you can sort of hear everybody go, oh. <laughs> The other mistake is now I'll read something funny, <laughs> as if it's discovered. <laughs> uh, let's start in a frivolous fashion. I hesitate to say funny because I know you'll be the judge of that. Um, but, uh, but since we're at a poetry reading, uh, here's one about a, a, a poetry reading. Um, <coughs> And it's about scurrilous, and it was written... Uh... Do you know how people have the idea that poets really like poetry? I mean, this one drink is really telling there uh, <laughs> on me, and suddenly I'm being completely honest with a bunch of strangers. But it's, um, and I do love poetry, but it's just that, you know, it's not always what you want to do in the evenings. Um, <laughs> it's, it's go to a reading. I mean, if you were a plumber, you know, you wouldn't go into demonstrations of plumbing in the evening necessarily, you know, and think you had a great night out. But one does enjoy uh, 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 some poetry readings enormously. Um, but there was one uh, about a year ago, um, that, and it was definitely there under sufferance, and I wrote this afterwards, and it was a famous visiting American poet. Um, I should really say things like, and it's a composite, it's not. But anyway. Um, LAUGHTER uh, and it was a fine reading, but it was a great reading because uh, I realised at the end, because of all the, the spontaneous introductions, to, uh, had all been polished to within an inch of their lives, and it was just brilliant. And I found myself really looking forward to the next introduction, you know? So, okay, yeah. <laughs> um, so I wrote this. Um, it's called Requests. Oh, tell us more about your dad, or why your second wife went mad, or how, how it was you had no choice but to give those men a voice. Sing that Cornish lullaby you hush your kids with when they cry. Produce a boiled egg from your pocket, a flagioli from your jacket. Expand on your idea that rhyme is dead, or tell us of the time you dropped your cell phone in the toilet. A joke, a bird call, please don't spoil it. Go on with your witty proem. Anything but read your poem. <laughs> few words in English rhyme with poem. <laughs> um, I'll, 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 uh, I'll maybe segue into a, a, an accidental uh, genre which is uh, middle class and uh, middle class. Uh, that would be accurate too. I am cheerfully middle class now, finally. Um, uh, Middle-aged um, uh, kind of existential crisis poems, uh, of which there seem to be more than a few in this book. Um, this was the worst one, not the worst poem, uh, which I won't read. But the, uh, uh, the, the what happened was I was uh, I was doing a reading last year in uh, uh, somewhere in Yorkshire, and I was staying in a uh, B and B, um, and it was my own fault because the whole thing came about through sloth, uh, my favourite deadly sin, and I was uh, I got stuck in a lift, which is my worst nightmare. Uh, but it was the world's worst lift. It was, it was like a one-person lift to, to really get the infirm between two floors, you know, but because I could not be arsed taking my bag up the stairs, I got just into this lift and there was a power cut, 
So, and, and the lights went off, and I'm stuck at the lift. Um, <clears throat> anyway, a power cut. This is what we've come to, this damn lift, this blackout, this airlock, this voiceless stop, this empty set, this storm cave, this dead drop, this death knot, this dumb waiter, this blind drift, this necker cube, this coal shed, this Swiss bank, this iron lung, this hide, this diving bell, this shooter coma, priest hole, holding cell, this meat locker, this isolation tank, this, since I'm too lazy for the stairs in this airless guest house in the Dales, so went for this jack screw for the old or lame or spent for this two second trip between two floors, this this way up box to sweat and say my prayers in, this six foot night, this theatre of doors, this. No, I mean, the whole thing took maybe five or six seconds, if I'm honest, you know, in total. Um, but it doesn't take long to have your life flash before you, um, <clears throat> as it turns out. Um, I'll, again, I'll read something fairly frivolous, but it's, uh, but, and then just uh, pursue a step descent into hell, uh, I think, maybe the way to play this game. Um, this was a commission. Uh, a failed commission. Um, I teach at St Andrews and no one can afford to live in St Andrews except uh, like Bill Murray and famous people. Um, uh, so the staff tend to live elsewhere. Uh, so uh, we moved to Dundee, where I'm from, which turned out to be a huge mistake again. Um, and uh, have you been to Dundee? You maybe no idea what I'm talking about here. I'm just casually assuming that people know the place. Um, it's uh, at the moment it's, in the, it's going through another of its famous periods of urban regeneration, um, which is indistinguishable from from post-apocalyptic, as far as I can see. <laughs> um, and it's, it's always had this great and deserved reputation for the most appalling municipal vandalism. Uh, but for some reason it managed to get itself shortlisted as, uh, 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 for UK City of Culture a couple of years ago, uh, which was funny enough, uh, uh, although a uh, few punchlines talk beaten by Hull, which is what happened in the end. Uh, and the other thing uh, you should maybe know about this poem is we're supposed to get the, uh, uh, the new Victorian Albert Museum unbelievably through some cosmic misfiling is going to, uh, to uh, uh, Dundee um, shortly, the, the Design Museum. Anyway, the council wrote to me and asked for a poem in praise of the city. Maybe it wasn't the best time to ask. <laughs> as, as it was literally boxing up uh, at the time and preparing to leave for what uh, I hope will be the final time. Um, I love the place really, but you know, honestly. Uh, to Dundee City Council. Fair play round here only junkies walk, so it's unfair that I affect my shock at this last straw, that fine baronial stair you found cheaper to fence off than to repair, thus adding 20 minutes to my trip via ring road, bomb site, rape tunnel and skip to the library where poor folks go to die or download porno on the free Wi-Fi. <laughs> My shameful vanity, I thought you might take time this time to personalise the slight. No, at least I leave here with my tail between my legs again and setting sail for that fine country called the fuck away. <laughs> Farewell, good luck with the VA. <laughs> And he didn't reply. <laughs> um, I always think it's funny when you see poets stop people clapping. I was like, I said something about the hand. No, 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 don't. Um, uh, no, it's fine if you want to. But don't, all I'm saying is, you know, the usual self conscious thing about don't feel in any way obligated to sort of uh, uh, um, applaud the poems you enjoy less. 
That would be awful. <laughs> but I'm always happy. You know, I don't care if there's, you know, there's a bit, uh, an image that strikes you as particularly opposite that you want to applaud mid-poem. It's fine by me. Like, you know, so, so. Uh, our protocols are peculiar, are they not? Um, there's a wee point for, uh, that I'd mentioned earlier for John Albert Crombie, um, and it was an attempt to, to, to convey to somebody who hadn't heard John play um, what he sounds like <coughs> on the guitar. Uh, and it's called The Six. You still sound like that man in early middle age whose demolition firm went west and marriage south, who was looking at his birthday through a fifth of Jack when all his friends pitched in to buy him a guitar. Two months it sat in silence. And then one day he found that he could play whatever came into his head and such was his surprise each time he picked it up. He couldn't hear himself above the sounds he made. The six strings still below his fingers like a novice or like Orpheus who would not let them thrill with selfhood lest it place a wall before the temple. Each night he reasons out the things he'd say to her and the song he plays is sad because it's now too late and joyous as somewhere the heart has yet been won. Um, and I'll read this for uh, 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 um, uh, it's an elegy it's hopefully the, the, the final elegy I will write for a woman called Radka Tonev um, uh, my favourite I don't know who your favourite Norwegian jazz singer is but mine is uh, <laughs> uh, and there's actually you laugh but there's loads of them um, mine is uh, 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 Radka Tonev who, who died tragically young uh, in, in the 80s um, and whose work, uh, rewardingly, is now far better known than it was for years. Um, she always had this thing about sort of um, singing quietly, you know, the, 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 the kind of nuance that you could get in singing very, very quietly. Even though she was half Bulgarian and, and could let rip like you know, never heard, she um, <coughs> didn't always use that part of her register. <coughs> She died in unfortunate uh, circumstances. Uh, it's just called Radka Tonev. I'll let you go if you'll let this come good. I'm speaking it as quietly as I can, a mile or so into the big day wood where you lost your voice. So much for the plan to master the sounds closest to silence, sing piano. Though I now know what you meant, when the ear lights on the half-said thing, it leans into its distance and is sent out into those spectral fires that play between the inner world and outer dark, as we are to the zone of breath and blue between the world and the dark. Radka, Skylark, you rose too far. Though as it died away, I heard right through the song, to what song you. <clears throat> um, this is a, a, a poem uh, uh, narrated uh, by a wave. Um, so it's like something you get in a poetry workshop, doesn't it? It's terrible. You know, it's a very poem in the voice of your socks. A very poem narrated by a wave. Anyway, so, uh, and I hope for my own sake that it's allegorical, otherwise I haven't got a clue what this means, but I suspect it's, um, uh, it's probably about um, uh, a lack of self-awareness, uh, uh, the business of confession, uh, the inability to calculate for one's own effect, uh, solipsism. I've got no idea who I might have had in mind here at all. Um, Wave. For months I'd moved across the open water like a wheel under its skin, a frictionless and by then almost wholly abstract matter, with nothing in my head beyond the bliss of my own breaking, and how the long foreshore would hear my full confession and I'd drain into the shale till I was filtered pure. There was no way to tell on that bare plain. So I felt my power run down with the miles 
and by the time I saw the scattered sails, the painted front and children on the pier, I was nothing but a fold in her blue gown and knew I was already in the clear. I hit the beach and swept away the town. Tony Blair, just thought I'd say Tony Blair to see you do it. Um, Tony Blair, what's that about? Anyway, it's essentially the message of this point. Um, <clears throat> uh, it's called The Big Listener. Um, and uh, it's called The Big Listener because I always think that if Tony was Stalin, uh, uh, which he could have been in an effortless segue, um, that's what we would have to call him. It's The Big Listener. Because uh, he's a listening kind of guy, as you know. Um, uh, and uh, this poem is uh, uh, is about Tony's favourite dream, and, it, and it's set in the Blair's bedroom. Uh, not a subject that should be long contemplated. <laughs> <coughs> uh, and it was about the experience of voting for him. I, 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 I think you know, and uh, how wrong we were about his personality. Uh, the big listener. Midnight, Connet Square. A headlight beam finds Sherry just back from her speaking date. She looks at you, less animal of late. You lose no sleep, but wake within a dream. Your favorite, that old divided dark, the white square at your neck, your good ear bent towards the long size of your penitent. You rinse a thousand souls before the lark and wake refreshed, if somewhat at a loss as to why they seem so lost for words. They are your dead, who still rose to the birds the day we filled the booths and made the cross before you'd forced them howling to their knees to suffer your attentions. Spare us, please. Um, and um, I, I confess I'm reading this mainly because of the sepulchral acoustic, um, but uh, <clears throat> it's, uh, somebody asked me to write a wee point for a humanist uh, funeral. A few years back. <coughs> or a friend of mine too. Um, uh, this is just called Funeral Prayer. Today we friends and strangers meet because our friend is now complete. He has left time. Perhaps we feel we're the ghosts and him the real. So fixed and constant does he seem, so star-like. May the human dream arise again to find him woken at its heart, though to be spoken once is as miraculous as a thousand times. What utters us, blind nature, told the trees and birds and bright stars. Yet of all the words we knew, his name was the most dear. We give thanks he was spoken here. <laughs> and in a, a seamless segue, uh, uh, this poem starts with the word here. Uh, bit of showbiz there, it was accidental. Um, it's, it's again, it's from the, uh, uh, the middle aged existential uh, freak out uh, genre. Um, and it's about my uh, current hobby. Uh, or at least it has been for the last few years, uh, I read that it was good uh, for people in their 50s uh, to uh, take a siesta. Uh, it's good for your pulmonary system. Um, well, it's, it's terrible for mine. I persist in doing it. Also, saying, you know, I take a siesta is an aggrandizement. I fall asleep around about 3 o'clock as well. <laughs> um, but 
I don't know if you get this, if you do that, um, which is that it lasts maybe five or six minutes tops, and then I'm, like, I, I'm awake, awake suddenly in a state of horrible existential panic, um, with my, my heart ringing in my ears, and you know, just feeling like you know, I'm on the wrong planet entirely. I can't remember when I signed up for this bullshit. What? Who is this? You know, sweaty, bald mammal. You know. You know? You know, why the gravity, for God's sake? You know, just like, what's that about? You know, um, so that kind of feeling. Uh, it's about that. It's just called the, uh, here. I must quit sleeping in the afternoon. I do it for my heart, but all too soon my heart has called it off. It does not love me. If it down tools, there'd soon be nothing of me. Its hammer beat says, "You are, not I am." It prints me off here, like a telegram. What do I say? How could the lonely word know who has sent it out, or who has heard? Long years since I came round in a womb, enough myself to know I was not home. My dear sea up in arms at the wrong shore, and her loud heart like a landlord at the door. Where are we now? What misdemeanor sealed my transfer? Mother, why so far afield? <coughs> uh, and I'll read um, maybe three more. And run away. Um, it's one of these poems that, I, I, that I've taken to reading these days because, um, in the hope that someone will come up and explain it to me, um, which occasionally happens. Um, I, I, a few years back, I wrote a poem called Two Trees, and I was reading it for ages uh, with, with no sense of uh, uh, what it was about at all until it was explained to me by a member of the audience. And at which point you went, of course that's what it's about. Yeah? Um, so this is uh, similar. It's just called A Threshold. <clears throat> Where have you gone, my little saving grace? Iona or Iola of the laugh like falling silver. Now nothing's in its place, and all's as light and cold as that blue scarf I lost or left without or I don't own. Everything shames me, every card declined. You slid between the stalls and you were gone, though I scoured the field for hours, hoping to find you sat with the silent children of the fair or some such nonsense, though I always knew you'd taken another hand, the way kids do, not looking up. This place again. It's where I wake up and recall I have no daughter, or fall asleep and dream I have no daughter. I'll read three because they're short. Um, uh, I think this is a, uh, an ecology poem. And so far as we have an, ec an ecology to elegize, um, uh, it's called Nostalgia. I miss when I could drop down on all fours and flick the ground away from under me. I miss the wire I ran into the earth. I miss when I was the bloom on the sea and we slept forever under the warm clouds till something spoiled in us twitched with design and woke the clock. So we arose and went. Last night I rode out to the beeless glade and lay down on the grass to listen to the water eating at the edge of things. My sister taught me to watch the stars this way, lest I think that heaven was up, or heaven, lest I forget the stars are also under us, where they sink and sail into the dark like cinders. This is a... <clears throat> 
it's, it, sorry, this is as grim as it'll get, and then I'll read something a bit more uplifting to finish with. Um, uh, but this is pretty bad. Although I don't think, uh, personally, I don't think this is a grim poem. It's a poem about putting, putting a dog down, which admittedly isn't the cheeriest introduction you've ever had. Um, but, you know, have you ever put a dog down? Well, this is... Um, uh, but if you've had to do that thing, uh, you know, put a dog to sleep, the same thought I suspect will have occurred to you, and it's a banal thought, but it's a, you know, but it's a, a true one, which is, isn't it amazing that compassion that we can demonstrate towards our domestic uh, uh, pets that we seem incapable of showing each other, you know? I see the euthanasia bill was knocked back again with an increased majority against it, thanks to a genius politicians. Um, anyway, um, so this is a, it's really for, for my dog, to be honest with you. It's called Mercies. She might have had months left of her dog years, but to be who? She'd grown light as a nest and spent the whole day under her long ears listening to the bad radio in her breast. On the steel bench, knowing what was taking shape, she tried and tried to stand as if to sign that she was still of use and should escape her selection. So I turned her face to mine and seeing only love there, which for all the wolf in her, she knew as well as we did, she lay back down and let the needle enter. And love was surely what her eyes conceded as her stare grew hard and one bright aerial quit making its report back to the center. <clears throat> I, and I'll finish off with a poem uh, for my kids. Um, called The Roundabout. For Jamie and Russ. It's moving still, that wooden roundabout we found at the field's end, sunk in the grass like an ancient buckler from the giant's war. Our first day of good weather, our first out after me and your mother. Its thrown mass was like trying to push a tree over, a row, a galley sealed in ice. I was all for giving up when we felt it give and go. What had saved the axle all those years? It let out one great drawn out yawn and swung away like a hundred gates. Our hands still burning. We lay and looked up at a sky so clear there was nothing in the world to prove our turning but our light heads and the winds long. Thank you.